All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog, Existential Way. Kevin Meredith here. Gang stalking biblical bloodline nations surround us, part three. Post holiday season. Welcome back. Today, I want to talk about something that pertains more to my immediate uh, situation with my gang stalking is seeing how we've been talking about these bloodlines, but we haven't really talked about how they are also surveillancing your family as well. I noticed for at least for I speak for myself on this because you know, I used to be when I was when I was a little kid, we used to do 4th of July on the army base and we've always lived near army bases for some reason and I think I don't know if my family on my father's side was involved um, I never took um, heed to why the access was there you know until a friend had recently mentioned that to me but nonetheless it's this thing where as a kid I played baseball for a, a baseball league on the army base I went to 4th of July at a different army base and I wasn't an army brat or anything like that, though. It just, I never thought about it until that question was raised. And another thing, too, is um, being a targeted individual and being awakened to it, being aware of it, you begin to see the targeting that goes on with your immediate family, if you have the eyes to see that. You may be thinking, well, they're being used as well. Sure, they may, might be, but they're also... I kind of have this this premonition that they're trying to um, get rid of certain family bloodlines. They're trying to not just sabotage your relationships, but they're trying to sabotage um, your immediate family. The the extent of it uh, being able to procreate and continue its lineage further along, and I've noticed that. On my father's side, it's very much so been a struggle through life where, where, where it seems like his side has just been so prone to cancers that could could be caused by uh, externalized weapons, such as these beam weapons, these laser weapons, these, these DEWs. I, I'm coming to the conclusion for my own self, and I, I don't seek to prove it to anybody. I think a lot of these cancers are, are artificially induced by... Uh, the government in trying to get rid of certain bloodlines. I, I'm, I'm firm with that in my belief. I don't really care what anybody thinks, you know. Um, we understand, obviously, how they sabotage our personal relationships, but have we moved along? And I haven't heard it too much about being an awakened, targeted individual. And if you if you are somewhat closer to your family, you're able to see that um, where that mechanism of the program is at work in trying to sabotage their lives as well. I know this for myself. I see it kind of going on where you just, it's not just you that is not, is not part of this world, but when you're from a, from a family of independent thinkers and that, that um, do have, um, there seems to be a generation of, of the older generations that have this some type of connection with the military in some way that you just don't, you don't see at first. You don't, you don't understand it. I've never been, you know, I wasn't raised under that, but I just don't, you know, I guess I, I always kind of had this premonition too that my father was never really my father either, you know, because we don't, we don't look alike at all, you know, so, um, but nonetheless, it's, it's being able to see how they're trying to quietly and silently exterminate family bloodlines together, um, and I was also talking to this friend about the real separation between the RH negative copper based bloodlines and the RH negative um, iron based bloodlines. And this is a real spiritual interspecies battle, I would say, if in the hypothetical, that could posit to a, a whole lot of truth to our situations is, is, is being confused about the whole RH negative thing. Not that I, you know, it's not my, it's not my end all be all. It's not that it doesn't make or break the totality of my faith, let alone have much to do with it because it's in the area that it, it, it can bring about such skeptic, skepticism and the whole, you know, it's, it, it is a bit of the conspiratorial, but I, I, I don't, 
I, I, you know, I do consider those who are conspiracy theorists as, as truth seekers such as myself. And there is truth to be found when you look into that. I don't, I don't hold it against anybody. I myself am, I consider myself a truth seeker. I always will be. That, that comes to my, that's second nature to me, you know. So I posit these open-ended questions, you know, and seeing and, and learning, consistently learning about the government bringing in these RH negative copper bla- copper based Celtic bloodlines to do their their ESP or whatever you call it their HSP um, different modes of, of mind reading and remote neural monitoring and, and not for the sake of good but more for more for the sake of of, of surveillance and and um, and um, observation if you will. And then seeing though, the, and I really, like I've said, I've always believed the RH negative copper base type. Um, yeah, there might be some targeted individuals that, that are a copper base type. I myself don't do well with copper in my system at all. I'm, I, I'm probably, um, the human aspect of my family line is so human. I'm pretty sure that we're iron based type. And that's, that's what kind of has led me to the conclusion, at least on my father's side, is... Uh, being an O negative, I believe, and sometimes they won't tell you. Um, but he very, I very much so do do well with iron in my system, you know, and so that I, I'm I'm more of a, a you know be your own doctor, you know, uh, if you have to uh, try some avenues of, of testing on yourself, I believe that's okay. I, then again, I I'm not a doctor, but I did sleep at a Holiday Inn last night, so I'm gonna go ahead and go there with that, um, nonetheless. Um, it's a real war at all levels, you know, it's not, you can never count out the hypothetical or the conspiratorial at this point, because these things, when they run their course, they're, are they, do they really, as an end-all be-all, do they remain conspiratorial? No, they actually become proven, so they're no longer conspiracy. So they are truth. There's an aspect that we can't ignore, you know. And so I'm just, you know, coming to this closure that, look, they're trying to, they get rid of families through, you know, using these DEWs, trying to induce cancer with, with weapons, and they can. It, it depends. You run a frequency at a certain level that can induce cancer. That's very much so a re- realistic plausibility. And if you run it at a, a different level, it could heal. It could, it could heal tumors. It could break apart tumors and stuff like that. So that's the thing that, you know, they want to keep from us, you know. And so expect it. If you're, usually I consider the real TIs. The RH negative iron based humans, according to the numbers, basically fit the 144,000. And so um, that's another thing just to keep in mind is, is are, there, are there copper types that they're trying to? Sure. The, the, and I consider the copper types, they're the kind who kind of hijacked the bloodline of Christ and say that they were a continuation of that. But really, not so. It really it really goes into the twelve tribes of Israel who have the Rh negative, iron based blood in them, or somewhere along their their family history, which is his has been perfected in the in the family line similar to that of, of Lot. Um, not Lot. Um, now I'm now I can't remember if it's if it's guys. Let me know if it's Noah. I believe it's Noah. I meant to say Noah, not Lot. Perfecting that 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 right uh, time and space based on lineage, much so in the times of Noah. And it's really uh, something that God does when he, when he brings the physical, when, when when, I guess when the rubber hits the road, when the spiritual implication makes contact with a physical representation at the right point in space and time along the historical timeline, does something of the spirit, is it perfected within that individual to, to elicit a, a a response to God that is in order, in God's order, and His timing and place for, for one to be aware of these things. Now, this is why I say, you know, a lot of these devils are outside, you know, let's see, if, you know, they're, they do seem to have more of a lizard-like, the, the RH negative copper base, but there are some that are, you know, they, they, they can still come from a tribe, you know, it could be from Dan, could be from um, I, I don't know if, if Esau is considered, but most likely not. I, I don't believe Esau is. Where Esau's position in the future is, is you're going to have to go to Scripture with that. You know, um, Whether Dan is going to be reconsidered as one of the tribes, um, 
I don't know. Because I feel like Joseph, I think according to scriptures, Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh were the ones that replaced the half-tribes. At least Manasseh were, were replaced, have replaced Dan. And so, like my mother's side, she's from Ephraim. Um, and so it's unique. You, you have this this set of this uh, ca- set of characteristics that come along the historical timeline when it comes to uh, that right admixture to a lineage that 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 creates an individual who's perfectly aware in God's order and can see not only himself or herself in the gang stalking situation and and how it's evolving around them, but can see it for others as well. Yeah, I can see others being gang stalked too as well. But a lot of the times, if you're still around immediate family, you might have to take into question the fact that, yes, if, you, if your family is not a believer but is an, is an independent thinker, are they being used? Yes, but also are they be, are the, is the attempt to try to stop them from their, the, 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 the continuation of their lineage as well? And I would say yes too. You know, you see these people get used up, unbeknownst to them, unbeknownst to the fact that they're trying to get rid of certain bloodlines, certain family lineages, and then you're going to have people who don't know who are who are the naysayers to your to your response to that. They, they, look, they're programmed like that. Look, I'm not. You know, I, I know the experiences and the relationships I go through are not solely manufa- manufacturing on my part uh, of any interest, but I know when they send certain, you know women in what I have the, the the limit that I have to work with with that you know I know you know it's not yeah have most of these women come in and, and are, are they you know it, have they become have they been sent prepackaged to um, try to deliver a message I've tried to, you know have they come in and they're already seeing other people have they come in with with a a pre-programming that that is keeping them in in their place so they don't want to grow any further at least with you but somehow they were sent in sure it, it's happened throughout my life it's not it's undeniable it's not about the blame game i'm just telling you how it has been for me um so i under as an example i understand it i understand that some of these women these so-called ti women they're sent in but they already have their life settled for them. They already are. They already have other halves. They already have um, um, the answers to the questions that you have. These people, beyond even beyond the so-called TI women, the perp in general, they have scripts that they're reading. You know, I'm sure a lot of brothers out there, um, you might be asking the question: Is why, you know, maybe I just made a big mistake in, in believing or having an understanding that that TI women are into TI men. You know, I think TI men like um, do find relatability in trying to relate to TI women, but I think at, at, a, at another level, at so many levels of this, the TI women are, are, are they tend to be more of a, a, an, a, a vessel to receive a, an influx of different energies. And, and so that's something to be careful of as well, you know. You might be asking, why has it never worked out for me? Is it is it my fault? And sure, they're going to make make you believe. They want you to believe and set you up to believe that you're blameworthy and that you're not the victim. They're the victim. Fine, you know. So bygones be bygones after that, right? But you don't take it to heart so much. You take it impersonally, and and you just ask God to to, to you know sanctify you to the bigger picture of what He's doing to set your eyes on those things. And then this is just hypothetical. This is also observation to what I've gone through. And it's just undeniable at this point. I'm sure there's brothers out there. I'm sure there's sisters out there who can relate to that. You know, why do these people keep, why are they sent in? And what, what is it that they, they, they come prepackaged? That there, there is a limit to their existence when they're relating to you that, that cannot be passed. It cannot be, that open-ended question cannot be answered. You know, I'm just saying that's a, that's how it's always been for me. Where are they now? Not in your life, right? So, uh, <laughs> I've just uh, I've concluded that for myself. You know, and, and this season is that final season of just. I think for my healing process, it just takes longer. You know, when you're when you have the heart for your, for for individuals of humanity, and they just don't know how to receive who you are, they don't, or they don't know how to receive your love. Um, you're going to have to t- learn to take it with a grain of salt and even have to set up your spiritual guard 
in defense of, uh, of, of, of allowing yourself to get too enthralled into a situation as a brother or a sister, but don't let it define your, your, your readiness and your willingness to, to preach the gospel message, to, to be open to receive people who are, are real and really having a hard time. You know, if, if God brings them, that's, that's between you and God. And then you have to answer to God, you know. And he says, look, and there was a lot of people that doubted, you know, Jeremiah, he doubted. He didn't want to tell the king what, what God said, you're going to tell the king what, what the king needs to hear. And then, you know, once Jeremiah did it, he was in doubt of doing it. And God's like, why are you in doubt of doing it? You know, I told you what you had to be, what, what you had to have said and you said it. But he put a lot of human reason and doubt behind the thought of it after the fact. And that's, I think a lot of us empaths do that because we consider people, we, we step in their shoes and, and, and wholeheartedly relate to them, but they're unable to receive our love, you know? And I, that's because the love we're talking about is, is, is an agape. It's, it's, it's God's order. It's inside out. It's the kingdom within. And when people feel like there's still something to be gained by having one foot in the world, they're like an outside in circumference that, that is kind of revolving around you and they all seem to just keep revolving and one comes in after the other after the other and, and then, then you have to be the one who breaks that cycle of it allowing it to happen to you that's, that's one thing you know and so um, you know I'm learning you know a lot of the a lot of these brothers know exactly what I'm talking about you know why the setups why the you know why the half measures with these women and um because we truly have a heart for, for the other kind too. You know, we truly want to, um, but you got, look, I look at it like this, like God is going to, he's got the one for you, but until then you, you are going to be prepared as the bride of Christ. You don't need to worry about that. That, that has its place, but it's, it's an, it's, it's, it's on no par with what God, the place that God bestows upon you for relating to him. And that goes to you sisters out there too. Same. If you're feeling neglected, you're feeling dejected, you're feeling rejected, don't let your eyes settle on the things that, that, that seem to have an overbearing weight of, of having that one foot in the world. You got to have two feet in God's blueprint and all else will take its place. You know, you know, the, let the spirit lead you, you know, to both parties. And that it's hard to learn when you just want immediate attention and immediate relations and immediate getting to know someone, then that's what is going to, you know, that's the nature of who we, we, we want to relate. We want community, but God want sanctification you know and 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 at that sometimes he means physical separation for you to get it and it's hard so for us for for those who of us who are spiritually grafted into the israel of jacob that right there that contact point can be a very very difficult reminder and, and, and breakthrough if you're going to have that spiritual breakthrough that's where it's at you know right there you know when and, and so you have to understand that the nature at some point has to make contact in your in your mental processes with the supernatural but but one of them has to have a greater impact when it comes to the spiritual implication making contact with the physical representation even your 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 you have to when you when there's a question on your mind you have to be disciplined and follow through that's concrete You've turned it into an action now. You have to follow through. Okay, the decision, it's like that contact is the decision. But the action of it, the follow through, is the determining factor of, of, of where you're going with that. How you're going to let God build your trust again, build your relationships. And, and if it's not meant to be, look, look to God, you know. But I know for myself that it's been a, it's been a damn, it's been a damn near cornering and a damn near... Uh, rejection all out, you know, at, at various levels. This, this, and I don't know why so many people are scared of me. It's just, it's just amazing. I know why for the perps. The perps, they live in fear, and so their that fear emits a a type of escapism where they want to put the suffering to keep themselves from suffering onto the one who can bear that. You know, the real victim, the the real the real targeted individual, the real one. And so that's one thing is, is I don't want anyone, that's one thing I've learned is don't, I don't want my fears, I, I need to work on those if they're there. And sometimes they're there. Sometimes they're a projection of others' fears, though. You've got to be spiritually discerning on that. 
and you got to know when to work on yours for yourself, you know, and you got to just be like, look, I don't want to relate to anyone who wants to just keep the fear base of their own worldly construct, their own, even in the, even their own mi mental mind construct of, of who God is in a fear-based reality where I, that the, the relationships are all about separation. No, that's not going to happen then. That's going to, God is going to lead you away from that, you know, and you, you're, you can't look back. You don't want to, you don't want to lose your fruit and become a, a pillar of salt, you know, like Lot's wife. Excuse me. And so, even in your, it can happen. You get too many of these distractions and your spiritual effectiveness can really take a halt. It can really become destabilized and, and, and functioning at a, at a very ineffective, and you don't feel good about it. You're not going, you're not supposed to, you were not born to feel good about a low, a low uh, ineffective spiritual relationship with God. You are not going to, you know, and that's when you have to just break contact. You just got to be like, look, and you got to look out for people. You got to be the one who is a seer. You know, I see things. I, I observe. That's a very important thing. When when you when you begin taking, when you're inquisitive and curious about what's what the world is doing at hand, you see what it is doing. But also, just as importantly, you're able to see what it isn't doing. That brings much clarification. The same with your relationships. The same with those around you in your immediate vicinity such as any family, if there's any of you left behind, you know, because I, like I have my sister visiting out from Virginia and, um, I'm watching how these people react around them too, you know, and I, I, I notice that my family, we just, we're, so, we're such independent thinkers. We don't consider, nor have we ever been inclined to this, this, this power trip this whole spiritual mark of the beast, which which preempts the, the physical RFID, you know, the cherry on top, if you will. For those who are in, they're so ego, they're so fear-based, they're, they, 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 they're absolute subservient to the AI beast system. They just can't wait to get marked, you know. And so I'm, I'm talking about that when you're not on board with that and you're, you just think differently, you're just a real human, you're a real RH negative iron-based human, then you can see why some of these copper-based ones live. They're, they're they're programmed for fear, and they have they they tend to have a bit of a reptilian mindset, a very fear-based you know reptilian construct that they function by, which is very lower brain-based, lower functioning. And sometimes, excuse me, sometimes you know, Father, forgive them because they just don't know. And if they never come to know, you just can you continue to be a for you 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 as the as the responsible party become the person who just forgives you know not just seven times but 70 times seven you know just that's how it that's how it works that's how christ says you not to say you're you're going to be some guru and you're going to be the embodiment of forgiveness and you're going to you know you kind of use this whole large you know large mask to just kind of use it as a ruse to keep yourself away from the world and and non you know, you're better, not like so much you're better, but you're beyond in such a way that you're just, you're, you're an island into your own and you just, you use these, these ideals as a, as a, you know, a thing to distance you, yourself and, and kind of look beyond others. No, I'm talking about, that's not going to help you relate in your ministry to anybody, you know, <laughs> your day to day. And uh, so be ready and willing though. That, that's what it is, you know, when the rubber meets the road, you got to be able to give a, an account of the gospel message to somebody who God sends to you and it it does take spiritually discerning sometimes those people are just sent because they need your help and they need a, they need a bit of they need a, some encouragement from you know a godly person you know and so I mean I I know that I've been trying to respond trying to respond better to the comment section just to you know even if you're a perp and you're look there's people that the, the perps are learning a little they're taking in a lot of information from TIs so is the government the government is 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 trying to adjust its plots and its plans by the information it gets from us. Oh, wholeheartedly. That's why they keep some of us going. They they're not just going to cut a vital source of information on YouTube because YouTube has some new laws. The forces that be will keep your 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 channel up because and sometimes you'll be left alone because if you're in, and then you have to be like, you know what? I got to know when to give up this little bit of podcasting for a time. Because these people are just itching ears. They want these itching ears. It's not about them getting saved. It's about them twisting and turning the truth that you're giving them through through the message, 
and employing it for 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 bad or or, or, or an ulterior agenda of, of this AI you know one world order and seeing how they can manipulate it and, and bring it back on not just you but but at the good the, the anything good of the world at large and sometimes like I said there's these lower vibrational beings you know vessels that just don't know how to receive love in God's proper order and so there there there's only so much you can do to you can lead them to the water you can show them the water you can describe the water you can but you can't make them drink you know and that's something that you're going to have to recognize in and of yourself is do I want to wait on someone or a people a gainsaying people who want to be shown and told about the things of heaven but they really don't want to be of it and see this is what the narcissist mindset does is it, it all it wants to do is take and so the system will take your information but never truly be quickened in, uh, quick it won't be a thing that's that's quickened of the Holy Spirit because they first off they don't have it so when I give you the information, you receive it readily. You're, you readily receive it because you know we're on the same level. We're on par. But when they receive it, they have to run it through a, a, a basically a worldly filter or lens to be able to digest it and actually reapply it, you know, in a way that they can manufacture it for their agenda, period, you know. Excuse me. And so... Yes, these bloodlines are very real. And when you begin to see through the spiritual things, so some people leave the spiritual equation of it as, as the end-all, be-all. That's, that's just it. It's just the end-all, be-all. So I, I have to study no further because now I'm all right. I'm at, you know, and, and if, you, if you are at that, that's a good place sometimes. If you are, at, your Christian walk is telling you, I am at that place. I'm, I'm really at peace and rest. I have that peace beyond all understanding. That's a good place. But what, what happens too, though, is... is when it's time to apply the growth application of it, the peace will begin. It will become a motivator to more understanding, to conclude more of the peace. And so the bigger picture grows. It continues. It's not a timeline-oriented thing. It's not a there's a beginning and there's an end. No, it's an all-encompassing thing. And so the things you're talking about are are global in in um, circumference, just as much as they are immediate in in verbalization. You know, they're, they're, they, they, you're speaking to all levels, all planes. You're speaking to the duality from, um, that oneness, that place that God has sanctified you. And so that's what they're, they want to listen to you and have an understanding of what the light is about, but they never want to drink of the water. Do you see? They can't, they weren't, the program does not function like that. So if they can't have what you have, because the father has supplanted you with that, those seeds that that are going to flourish like the faith of a you know if you have the faith of a mustard seed and you and you fully allow God to to flourish it and, and really allow God to do the work of it in you you're not the vessel to be idle anymore you are the one who just disseminates that that knowledge from 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 what the what the mustard the the tree of the mustard seed has produced and so it's not it's no longer an idolization it's a faith that is, is is peace beyond understanding so you freely this is something that's freely given this knowledge you know I've always said faith is, faith is abiding wisdom you might have peace beyond understanding but if you if you look at it like a if you look at it like the caption of your life but you don't know the existence of it then you really you really aren't entitled you really and, and it's proven you really don't know what it is you're you're disseminating if you haven't existed of it you, the, the words aren't there when you're of it the Holy Spirit gives you the words so that's how you know you're there, you know. It gives you the words to say, you know. And then you're motivated to surpass the understanding that you had at one point with the peace of knowing, the peace of mind that, that, that it's okay to learn and grow. And then that's, see, sometimes there are those who, who function with that reptilian mindset. They, they're, they're debased. They, they, they can't go any they just can't do it. They're unwilling, something in them keeps them from that and I I was thinking about this I was like dang I was you know looking beyond the pure-hearted believer and just to someone who's who's pure-hearted who's a who 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 has that happy-go-lucky vibe if you will there's happy-go-lucky but 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 it seems like when 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 you bring that joy of the Lord to them something even there's a subtlety of a uh, 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 of, of grinding of teeth, gnashing and wailing, a little bit of that begins to manifest. And that happy-go-lucky in the nature perspective that they come with 
subtly and slowly becomes you kind of de deteriorate it for them and it, it, it just ultimately you can see them subtly beginning to manifest their their joy is corroding you know they're not their joy they're they're happy go lucky in the nature but your joy is permanent it's eternal it, it might be disturbed or perturbed by their presence although you're always going to have the joy they're feeding off of it in such a way where that manifest when they manifest it's like the lens I'm talking about them having to transfer it for them to digest it in a in an inverse way. So we have these feeders in life. We have these people who are who are sent. We have these, you know, so-called TIs. And um, until you know this within yourself, you can't project this knowing onto a community unless the community has it at large and from my point of view it just doesn't have it it's 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 i i don't even i feel like sometimes i'm just speaking to wilson the volleyball at this point you know and, and it's just a few that that get it which is fine i'm not against it but most just want to listen and they don't want their lives disturbed i guess you know um and you just have to be okay with it because the world can become, you can't let this this place below you become, keep you at, 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 a, at, a, at a place where you're bored. It's boring for me. Like, this world is so slow. Like, you know, it's, it's you have to make use of your time. You have to be able to meet. And, and that's why I say, don't let them define for you what it is God is, is, doing, is, is telling you to do. Or you will always begrudge what it is you know you're supposed to be doing especially if you weren't born to remain at that subpar level you were remain to to have the gift to see with eyes to see and, and bring that that abiding wisdom to the brethren you know at a, at a much accelerated rate though as well um, there's this woman over here talking so loud about shallow nothingness you know and it's just they do that, you know. They talk loudly about nothing. And it's a projection, you know. But nonetheless, I digress. If you guys know exactly what I'm talking about, give, look, give me a thumbs up. I mean, yeah, that's that'll help, you know. Uh, but also, you know, um, that's pretty much it. It's looking, when you look deep enough and you begin to see what's truly going on around you, you might be able to see that your family is affected or being used, but not just used. They're trying. They're they're trying to exterminate your your bloodline through various. And why do you think they keep their bloodlines going, but they go out and human traffic and kidnap other people? They they steal the human being children off the bottom for trafficking. But you see their little Rh negative, you know. And I'm not against all Rh negative coppers. I don't know enough. Um, but I just look at the the, the bloodline physicality and the, and the behavior that follows suit, which you it's a telltale sign. When you begin to see people for who they are and their bloodlines, you can you can better predict their behavior. Like this guy, he's just walking and he just walked across the street to give a look over there to that guy, and now he's walking back with his hand in his pocket. He just he just basically predicted his own his own motion right there, and so very easy to see, you know. And then from that see now what I did is I didn't look at the bloodline across the street I looked at the behavior of the vessel across the street that's point I got a I got a connecting point from that behavior right there that that's so that's a linear form of patterning you know what was the confusion I would in my in my free will state of existence I wouldn't have crossed the street and then came back because that's not human that's that's something else controlling the vessel and so now we begin to see the zigzag of the linear patterning in society and some people will, now there's a time lapse too. You might look and you might say, well, if you ask the person, they'll be like, what are you talking about? I, I didn't cross the street. Well, I can, I can prove that you went to the corner, came back, zigzagged, and then there's a time lapse to that. There, because when they're controlled, it's like it's, at times they don't even know, they don't, there's no memory of it. There's no, you know, and it's like you could talk in front of their faces, they don't know. <laughs> you're talking to a damn, you're, you're talking to paint drying on the wall, right? <laughs> so that's what it is. That's what's like, okay, understand what that limit that lower limit is if it's boring to you if it's bringing complacency you're saying kevin you're just keeping your eyes too focused and i'm going to say you're right i'm just making an observation of it i need to be above and beyond that i need to get off this podcasting and, and do something with my life you know yes and so you're right and so um 
now you begin to see when you have eyes. I gave you an example, but when you when you're able to be more immediate with your awareness and you're not just looking from a reactionary place. Oh, it's happening. That's it. That's it. See, when you when people speak like this being spiritual, but they don't study it for what it is, it just it, it becomes a it plateaus that boring after a while. Okay, it's spiritual. Okay. Should I no longer learn from it now? Should I not study the physicality of it to, to, to confirm to myself that it's spiritual? And there's there's much more going there's much more going on at play here, you know, and, and sometimes you, you're going to have to apply yourself instead of respond inwardly by studying and bringing what you doubt to God. Bring what you doubt in faith to God. That's what it is. To have faith is to doubt, but not to give up because of the doubt, but to have peace that that surpasses all understanding because of the doubt. And then God will show you the things of what that that are aren't really a necessary for the ego of your free will, but the quickening of the spirit to the inner man in, in His order and His timing for your life. That's the best possible answer I can give you. But you have to allow God to do it. You have to allow God to give you the eyes. You've got to ask him for these things. You've got to commit what you doubt about your, your, your life, your walk to God, that, that, that you succumb to his will. And it's, sometimes it sounds a bit brash, but it's very much so necessary, you know. You, know, you have to give that, because with that, with that attachment is, is fear. The fear of the unknown, the fear of not knowing where you're going to go next, the fear of who's not going to be in your life. And we all go through that. But until you're ready to confront it, well, you you most likely will just stay there. And, and and people who project that, they ultimately want to stay. They want to feed their own fears. Misery loves company. Sure. Okay. Yes, it does. You know. And so, um, be the one to check yourself and 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 you know bring what it is you doubt to God. And, God, and God's not going to wrong you. He loves those who He loves His sons and daughters. You know. We were not born for this world. We were born that we would not remain captive to it, okay? Come out of her, my people. So once again, guys, I love you guys. Stay tuned. Um, I'm already considering it like the new season of the eternal year. I don't really care. I just, I, I don't have a sense of time anymore, so it's just wonderful. It's, it's a blessing. And I pray for you guys the same. I pray that you guys just um, do some do some good, good things in your life, you know? And... Um, God will prove you, you know, even through this targeting. So I, I, I thank you for listening in once again. Like and subscribe. And um, yeah, thank you for the donations as well. Keep them coming in if you'd like. Uh, keep, you know, donating to Ice Coffee Ministries, if you will. All that good stuff. So once again, guys, till the next one, Godspeed.